Well, salutations again, dear viewers. You're on with Nexon of the Vast Nexus, and welcome back to yet another Fortnite clip of mine. And as per usual with these clips, this is another solo win. Um, at time of recording, and at the time I actually did this, it's Chapter 2, Season 4. And if the ludicrous amount of fog isn't giving you any clue, this is right in the middle of Fort Nightmares for this uh, particular season. Don't mind the ludicrous kill count towards the end, we'll get to that. Fort Nightmares, last time I played it, was a bit underwhelming. Every now and then you approach an inanimate object and some uh, bot-controlled zombie would erupt out of it and just basically be more of a nuisance than an actual threat. This season definitely upped the ante a bit with the shadows. Fundamentally, you have players coming back into the map who can coordinate, well, not through speech. Uh, the shadows can communicate with anyone outside of their team or their party, but they can time their attacks, schedule like when they're going to attack players. And in fact, I'm going to be covering some of the behaviors that those of you who find yourselves shadows in Battle Royale might want to practice, because if the shadows that I had come up against at the end of this game were a bit more knowledgeable in how to fulfill the role, things might have ended very differently, because fundamentally, I only made one actual live, what shall we say, live player kill in this entire match. The rest of it was pretty much just shadows. So, fundamentally, shadows 1v1 versus a player, if that player is anything but in weakened condition, it's not going to end well for the shadow. If you stop moving, your body becomes invisible, but your eyes remain apparent, so you can't exactly, um, you know, camp forever waiting for somebody to sort of trip your trap. I actually forgot that I'd run into one of these gorgers. I haven't seen one in ages. But essentially, if you're going to take on a player as a shadow, it is highly advisable to have numbers on your side. And in addition to those numbers, have actual um, stealth or an ambush tactic. Wait for the player to be low or try to hit them from multiple angles. Never just rush a straight a player because more likely than not, you're going to wind up dead. So, as for a lot of my solo wins, uh, this began essentially not as a straight-up attempt to play the game, and it was more so I was trying to complete the challenge for Fort Nightmares. Specifically, I was endeavoring to visit the Witch's Shacks, different Witch's Shacks. I had three clusters together that I had in mind, but between the zone and certain complications, like first this and then players attacking me, I ultimately was forced to effectively abandon that objective. And of course, I don't just quit out if I fail to do what I accomplish. I play the game. Because part of the grind aspect of the game at the end of the day is that every chest you opened, every enemy you eliminate, every storm phase you survive, it's all worth points. Then of course this season, to unlock everything... Yeah, I initially didn't realize where he was shooting me from. He rushed. That was a mistake. And yeah, I'm fairly confident that's the only player I eliminated per se in the match, because of course they're not considered eliminated fully, if you will, unless they're eliminated as shadows. So I landed at a witch's hut, or shack, or whatever it's called. I did that, at least. But the rest of this just sort of turned into me... I've... Honestly, I was chatting with ZKA at the time. I don't even remember what I was thinking when I was just sort of playing it. I was just kind of running around. Speaking of which, uh... He's probably going to watch this, but shout out to you, ZK, for being a good luck charm. It's actually, I don't think, the first win I've had when he was spectating. So... <laughs> Now, this guy had just 
given up, I guess, because he... Yeah. So yes, shadow players, do not attack targets 1v1. You want at least 2v1. Preferably 4v1, because remember, your opponents have a ranged option. Several, probably. You've got to get right up on them to actually do any damage. It's also impossible to actually sneak, because you can crouch, and therefore you're always going to be on visualized sound effects. Um, the dash attack always improperly used. First of all, if you're going to use it to lunge at a player, spacing is very important to remember. Dash too early, you don't close the gap with your opponent, but you put yourself close enough to them that they could potentially one-pump you. Um, do it too late, when you're already too close to the player, you overshoot them and end up teleporting in front of them, and if they're running away from you, that puts you right in front of them, so they can shoot you the moment you appear. They'll probably just do it reflexively. Bang, you're dead. If you're going to use the dash, time it delicately. Also, you have a floaty jump. Use it as an alternative method of evasion. What you should be using your dash for is getting out of trouble or phasing through structures. Because I've noticed a lot of times shadows will break into structures. It's not a good tactic for shadow because fundamentally a shadow is most vulnerable out in the open. Players can employ their varied ranged arsenal to do hella damage, while you have to get right on them to do any damage of your own. Now, by comparison, shadows lurking in a building are not visible, not even by the eyes, because somebody has to go into the building to see them. And once they're in the building, that range gap has already closed to an extent where you can just start le leaning in on players. And your dash, which is effectively a phase dash, allows you to pass through solid walls. I've never knocked down a wall unless I was trying to knock a player off a tower as a shadow. I have always gotten within a certain range, hit that phase dash, zipped right inside of their bills and watched them panic. Most of the time, though, it ends with them hitting me with a shotgun and then immediately editing because they're a sweaty tryhard. And I think we all know at this point how I feel about them. In fact, it's becoming a meme that the sweaty tryhards are what are killing and ruining Fortnite. They're not wrong in making that assertion. A lot of people come into the game to have fun. But if you go into Battle Royale, chances are that's probably the last thing you're going to be doing. It's probably the last thing you're going to be thinking about. You know, the advertisement campaigns for Fortnite show, you know, slow building, you know, easy this, so far. It, it, that never happens realistically. It just doesn't. Now, my <laughs> success at the end of this came through a bit of luck, which is ultimately something you need because of how much RNG is used in Battle Royale, which is why these games have nothing to do with skill, not really. It was luck and a bit of careful play on my part. So, any... Shadow players in the vicinity have now scanned me, because one of them just used a shout. You can see one of them in the map is kind of creeping on me, but he seems more preoccupied with getting out in zone. Here's another thing. There's four shadow players, or three shadow players, right there. But they don't internally register that, hey, we have enough numbers on this one player player, we should rush him. No, they're all just kind of idly floating around. I think the meta strat with a lot of people right now with the shadows is basically just to avoid fighting until there's, say, 20 to 10 players left, and then they just rush that number of players. But honestly, if all the players are together, I have seen even the sweatiest tryhards put their disagreements, their mutual lust for the dub, on pause to deal with a common threat. And because all of the shadows are coordinated together, and a bigger threat in numbers... Players, even tryhards, will often focus shadows rather than each other. So, ultimately, shadows, to some extent, stand a far greater chance of winning by using the tactics that I normally use, but have been somewhat invalidated by this Fort Nightmare's change to the thing. I mean, it's not too visible now, but there's quite frequently a blinding fog over the map, which makes sniping beyond short distances impossible. And the Shadow's ability to basically radar you 
means that you can't just hide in a bush or in a building, because the shadows will find you. Trying to run someone over off-road is tricky. Trust me, I've tried it. So the thing is, the Shadow's best bet is get into a building, if you can, or bush, or somewhere, like, as a mass, as a huge group, and just chill out until you have no other choice but to fight the players, with whatever numbers you have. And then a Nightmare Royale is practically guaranteed. And I know that my viewer base is practically microscopic in the grand scheme of things, but... If any of you are playing Fortnite, and you're watching this, I mean, it's all going to be invalidated when Fort Nightmares ends, because this is sort of a unique game mode for this whole thing. But <laughs> there are far better ways of using the Shadow abilities than what you're going to see later this match. Because that is probably the most congested kill feed I have ever had in this game, and it's primarily because... The shadows did not coordinate very well, and... Yeah. Now, I am using the supersonic skin, but it's what has become a few of my custom designs. He's supporting the uh, Black Manta's back bling, because the uh, kill counter, whatever it's called, that he uses by default is just a little too flexy for me. Although I imagine this match, it probably would have been... Monitoring uh, quite a few kills. I've also unequipped his uh, Season 1 style default glider, which of course has its own sound effect and its own skin, so it's not actually the default glider. But I've unequipped it in favor of the shadow glider that I think I got in Chapter 2, Season 2. I actually really like the skin, the whole gas mask with the skull face thing and the all-black, uh, garment. It's very me. Another thing that I didn't do when I was facing against the shadows, I didn't build for protection, because like I said, shadows can phase through stuff. All you do by building a structure is box yourself in and limit your situational awareness. Now, I know that sweats can freaking tunnel edit and all kinds of other inane nonsense to get out of that very quickly. I can't do that. For me, my chances of survival are far better to keep a quick wit, a swiftly pivoting neck, so yeah, I heard these two coming, but I <laughs> he was emoting. A lot of these Shadow players are just throwing in the towel because they don't want a Nightmare Royale because it's not a personal win. They're kind of missing the point of playing a Shadow. Revenge. If we don't win, you don't win. It's one of those amazing instances in which Fortnite players are being not petty and vexatious. Even though they should be, because that's kind of the point. Die to players, become a Shadow, deny all the players a chance to win. Haha, ha, that's what you get for eliminating us, but yet these shadows are just kind of chilling. That's actually a player. Did I get a second player, Elim? Oh no, I didn't actually uh, Elim this one. I remember I dipped out because they just kept holding the freaking ceiling. Actually, that's a roof. They just kept holding the roof, and I could hear somebody else diving in. I'm like, I'm not going to get third party, and I'm out of here. Yeah, turbo building. The sweats wanted it. The sweats got it. And it basically has introduced a meta in this game, which is broken as hell. I intend to do an actual video demonstrating that at some point. But the ability to hold a wall, effectively, so long as you have mats, is broken as hell. Because you can have a modest number of mats, and your enemy could have an excess, an overabundance of ammunition. And you'll still have a wall after they've run out. 
that's super broken. It's like, don't even give me that. It's fundamentally some Fortnite equivalent of putting your shields up. And the notion that it's a trade-off because they can't attack you is also garbage, because a millisecond later they'll edit a hole in it and you'll end up being given a facial by a gold pump shotgun. So at this point, I wasn't intimately aware of players respective to shadows. I'm just so I'm sort of keeping an eye out for those two players that I dipped out on before, because I could kind of hear someone gliding in behind me, and I was like, great. So I'm, I've got this one who's holding the barrier, and is probably going to edit through it the moment they hear me stop to reload. And I got somebody else gliding in behind me. I'm going to get third party super hard. I'm out of here. Now, what saved me for this final bout was, ultimately, distance. I was towards the edge of the safe area, and I believe I was out of range of the detection screams used by the shadows, which meant that only shadows who had wandered in my direction were actually able to uh, locate me. I was actually surprised to find a Quinjet landing zone that had not yet been looted, at least not fully. It was around my attacking the Quinjet that I noticed that it was- it had turned into about 16 shadows versus little old me, and I resorted to- I might have need for some of these drones because the numbers are not in my favor. Unfortunately, the storm closure kind of crept up on me, and I only ended up making out with one drone. Not what I was hoping for. Okay, that's bug. There was a Stark drone there. And there was a Stark drone there. I'm... That's an interesting replay glitch. Ultimately, my drone did do some good. It was taken out before I was, so... It definitely keyed me into the fact that somebody was on me. Because you'll note that my... Kill feed shows pretty much two elims clustered together, and then a space of time, and then two more elims. That is what gave me a fighting chance, because you can deal... This is my point. You might think that, oh, we got 2v1, we have a numerical advantage. In an open space, though, where you have to cross open ground to reach your opponent... Oh, don't even try. Like I said, you need four shadows per player. Do not go aggressive in the open without four shadows per player. What are you even thinking? Half the time the shadows just want to die so they can go back to the lobby. Well then quit out, what's keeping you here? If that's how you feel about it. So he overshot, case in point. And he dispensed the loot that would save this match for me. He must have been low, I was able to one-tap him. So we have Wolverine's claws, Midas's or Shadow Midas's drum gun. And most importantly, Iron Man's Repulsors. Because that allows me to get some air where I'm effectively out of reach of the shadows. Because normally Iron Man's Repulsors are not the preferred weapon compared to Doom's arcane whatever. Because Doom has a far less floaty jump. Of course, it's also a lot lower to ground. Doom has a far less floaty jump, and the explosive splash area on his weapon is bigger and deals more damage. But here, where my opponents don't have a ranged option so they can laser me out of the sky while I'm floating around with Tony's stuff, um, those repulsors keeping me in the air basically kept me out of reach of the shadows, so they could not get me. Now, I obviously prioritized, even more so than my sniper rifle, because I realized that, well, with no players left and the circle getting smaller, especially in this fog, that sniper rifle is next to useless. So lose it,
get the drum gun because the drum gun is capable of dishing out a lot of pain very quickly and doesn't have the oops I missed a shot penalty of a shotgun where there's a long build up period before you can let that next shot off and the small magazine capacity. So I ran the drum gun for a while, but eventually I came to a point where ammunition had gotten to critical levels of depletion. And I was forced to use the, um, the gauntlets. So there's five shadows left. And if they'd all rushed me at once, they could have done something. But they didn't. There's one. Good tactic here, trying to sneak up behind while I was distracted, but I was in too good condition for that to work. So now I'm much more of an active predator because... Yep, there we go. Get that distance. And then deal some damage. So the last two become very coy, because they've realized that this one guy has just wiped out, like, ten of us. There's that distance again. Another one bites dust. This one becomes fiercely evasive. I mean, you can see the huge time gap there, two minutes about, without actually seeing him again. Probably looking for loot to recover health, but at this point, with my equipment, and considering the fact that I'm still in decent shape, it doesn't stand a chance. And pretty much we're just looking at BM right now, he's trying to drag it out. Which is fine, I still got the dub. I got two minutes. So yes, normally I'd say that Tony's Gauntlet's double-edged sword. Potent attack, sure, but useless against structures, even more than Doom stuff, and that floaty jump just invites you to get lasered by somebody with a scar. But in this instance, being able to protract that hang time and stay above my enemies who have to fight me at close range, enormously beneficial. I had replenished some of my AR ammo there, so... Yeah, he's, he's looking for an opening. And the moment he's seen, he tries to get real evasive. And that's the dub. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're all staying happy and healthy out there. And as always, fare thee well as I dance. I occasionally have fun in this game. Very occasionally. <laughs>